a statistics major at BYU. And I knew that I was different from the time I was little. Um, I mean, hindsight is 20-20, and I can look back and see when I fell in love with my best friend at the age of nine that things were going to be a little bit different in my life, but I didn't understand it then. I think I started to realize it when in Young Women's all the other girls would say, oh yeah, he's so cute, he's like this and this, and I wouldn't understand in the sense that it's kind of like, okay, he's a boy. Um, does Do I have to say he's cute? And I found myself making up these fake crushes so they would they would stop bothering me about it. And it really bothered me that I didn't like guys. And I would ask my mom, I was like, is there, is there going to, be, is there something wrong with me? And she would tell me, no, it's okay. You don't have to be like them. But I think it really cemented it for me when in high school I fell in love with my best friend. And it wasn't anything like sexual. It was, I want to be there for her and I want her to want me and I want to do everything with her and it really made me realize that I do have those feelings just for girls and it really scared me it was the summer before I came up to BYU and I came up here expecting very much expecting to just be alone and to stay alone and I had kind of accepted that fate and I came up here and I actually found a lot of really not good people and I came out to some people the first people were here and they didn't really know what to do with me, but they accepted me, and it felt really good. But even, even with the few people that accepted me, there was always this fear that I couldn't, I, I couldn't have both. I couldn't be myself and have the church. And so I tried to push it away really hard. And I always just ended up feeling empty without it. It took me a long time to realize that I needed God and I needed the church and so I went to the other extreme and I tried to bargain with God and I said if I do the if I magnify my calling to the best that I can will you please take this away from me and if I read my scriptures every night and I become the best member that I can will you please take this away from me and I remember countless nights of just being on my knees pleading and crying until I fell asleep only to wake up the next morning knowing that it hadn't been taken away from me and it left me feeling worthless because it's like he wasn't listening anymore. And it took me a long time to realize that he was listening and that this just wasn't going away. And that didn't mean that he didn't love me. And then I finally found peace when my senior year here, I came and I found a group of people that, a group of gay people here on BYU campus and it was like night and day to not be alone anymore and to realize that I was perfect the way I am. And I've prayed and I've asked God about that. And I know that he loves me just the way I am and I know that he hasn't left me. He knows exactly what I'm going through and exactly where I am. And I found peace because I know that God knows who I am and he knows exactly what I'm going through. And I've had that peaceful confirmation that I'm fine just the way I am and without that I don't think I could keep going and because of that I've been able to come back to church and not feel ashamed anymore and I realize that I need this I need the church and I need to be myself and what I am is a lesbian and I'm a Mormon and it feels amazing to be able to just be me and you know the peace comes when you realize that God still loves you and that I love you. I don't even know you and I love you because you're my brother or sister and I would love you no matter what. And I hope that you can find people in your life that would do that would feel the same way that they would love you and I hope you know that you're worth loving because you are and God still loves you. I'm a coin collector and I'm a Superman fanatic. I'm lesbian and I'm Mormon and it gets better.